Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the Python library pandas. Whether you're just interested in data science or are a data scientist, we'll cover the five must know methods about the pandas library. Let's jump right into our list with the number five spot. At number five, we have how easy it is to import and output your data using pandas. When using the library, all we need to specify is a file path to the file that we want to read in. So let's say Excel file is in a docs folder and it is called contacts1.xlsx. We can drop down and say data frame, pd, and then all we need is the read Excel method. We'll pass in the Excel file path and then let's print data frame. We'll go down and execute the file. So we'll say python3 pandas example.py. And now we're able to pull data from any source using the pandas read methods. You can read in a lot of different file paths, including CSV, JSON, and many more. At the number five slot, we also have the methods to output this data to many different file types. If we wanted to output our file to a CSV, we could just say to CSV and then put in the file that we want. So output.csv. When we execute this, pandas will place this information into a CSV file in this directory path. Since I'm working in my desktop, that means we'll have a CSV file on my desktop. Once we scroll over, we see output.csv and we can open it up. And now we have all that information that was in an Excel file and a CSV file. At the number four rank on this list, we have the ability to select data in our pandas data frames. So these methods that you need to know are .loc and .iloc. Let's use the .loc method right now. Let's say that we only wanted to work with this name column in our data frame. What we can do is go to our data frame variable. We'll put a dot and then specify the method loc square brackets and now the first argument is the row values that you want so let's say that we want all of them and then we only want the column of name now we can print data frame with only the name columns as a series so we'll print this now and we return only the name values like we expected we also said that we had the dot iloc method so dot iloc just returns us an integer position inside the data frame so if we use dot iloc We'll say every row in the first column. We'll save and execute this. And now we're given all the titles for the people in that data frame. When we use pandas, it starts with a zero. So that's why we don't return the name here when specifying the first value. If we were to change this to a zero, we should be returning the name column twice, which we are. Every data scientist that uses pandas needs to get very comfortable using these two methods. The number three entry on this list is more of a technique and less of a method. What it is, is conditional indexing. Every data scientist needs to be able to look through a data set and find out when a certain condition is true. In pandas, this is very simple. Let's say print, and then we'll specify the data frame, df, and then we'll actually index using square brackets on that data frame. We'll specify a specific column that we want to meet a criteria. So let's go up and pull this column here. We'll say title, we'll pass that in. And now let's say that we want all the entries where the title is equal to engineer. Now drop down and execute your Python script. We see with pandas that we can very readily search through data sets for certain conditions. The number two entry on this list is the concat method. We already saw how we can read in data from multiple data sources, but the concat method allows us to join those data sources together to form a new data frame. Let's drop down and say Excel file two, and this one is in the same directory, so docs, and then it is contacts2.xlsx. We'll do the same thing as before and say df2 is equal to pd read excel and then pass in that excel file 2. We'll go down a few lines and now we'll say our third data frame will be equal to the pandas method concat. We'll pass in those two data frames that we have. So df1 and df2. We'll specify the axis to concatenate along as zero. And then we'll drop down and say print df3. Now, when we execute this, we should have the information from both of those spreadsheets in one data frame, which is exactly what we get. Data science projects typically have many different sources, so using the concat method effectively is a must know. The number one spot on this list is the group by method. The group by method allows us to get insights from across our entire data frame using only a few lines of code. Let's go ahead and use the group by method now. We'll say total count is equal to the third data frame. We'll use that group by method and let's say that we want to group on the title field of this data frame. So we'll go up and copy that and paste it here. And now let's say that we want to count these up by occupation. Next, we'll drop down and say print total count, and then we'll index it 
on the name column. We'll execute the file. And now we see just how quick it is to use the pandas group by method. We can get insights from our entire data frame in just two lines of code. These are just my picks for the top five methods in the pandas library. There's a lot more like date times and dealing with missing values, but these are just the five most useful in my eyes. If you think I left one out, please put it in the comments below so other people can see it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know. Until next time.